Roles Reversed. That was the theme of the 2023 Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam. This Game Jam is a 48 hour period where participants have to make a game from scratch based on the jam's theme. The theme, Roles Reversed, was revealed at 1 p.m. on Friday, July 7th. After the theme reveal, I hopped into Discord with a friend and we started brainstorming ideas together. There were two ideas in particular that stuck out to me. A tower defense game where you play as the towers and a stealth game where you play as an NPC trying to catch the sneaking player. The stealth game idea was sticking with me, so I committed to doing something with that. I wanted to start the stealth game by setting up a basic prototype first so I could try out some ideas. I got a simple black and white tile set in place with navigation. I created the player and enemy entities with their respective control scripts. And I got simple lighting in place which would only reveal the player you're hunting inside the visibility cone. With this setup in place, the next challenge was to figure out what exactly the gameplay mechanics would be. How would I make playing as the NPC in a stealth game fun? The idea was still murky to me and I was starting to get a feeling that I wouldn't be able to figure out how to turn this into a compelling game. I decided to stream some development of the game. It was during this stream that I fully realized that I had no clue what to do with the stealth game. Part of me wanted to keep prototyping to find the fun, but I was worried that it was going to take too long and leave me with little time to submit a quality game. So, live on stream, I dropped the stealth game idea. Okay, so sorry, no more stealth game. I decided instead to pursue the tower defense idea I mentioned earlier. In that idea, the towers would be directly controlled by the player, while tower placement and tower upgrades would happen automatically. Presented in this way, this idea was a role reversal of what is typical for tower defense games, where you, the player, place turrets and manage the upgrades while the towers shoot enemies automatically. I already had some initial art done from the stealth game, including this farmer looking guy and some background tiles, so I decided to keep those and build around them. What resulted was the beginnings of a farm-themed tower defense game. I created a daisy to serve as the first basic tower and made it so that left-clicking the mouse would shoot a projectile from it. With that, I had prototypical combat. A good tower defense requires that the player has information about which path the enemies are going to take. So I drew a dirt path tile set in a sprite and got that configured with auto-tiling in Godot. At about 10 p.m. on Friday night, nine hours after the jam started, I had a simple tower defense game with a single tower that could shoot enemies that follow a path. I was satisfied with my progress with this new idea. I went to bed that night eager to continue development in the morning. This video is sponsored by me. If you want to learn how to make a complete game in Godot 4, check out my Udemy course. The link for that is in the description below. There were a number of mechanics still missing from the early version of the tower defense game. Among these was a failure condition. Enemies didn't yet have a final goal. So I got to work on Saturday morning, making a silo to serve as the end goal for the enemies. I slapped a health bar at the bottom of the screen and got enemy damage working. With that, the basic failure condition was done. The win condition was also necessary and it was simple to implement. All I had to do was count all the enemies that were spawned and decrement the counter when enemies died or reached the silo. When that number hit zero, that would mean that the player won. I fired up another stream on this channel to continue work on the other mechanics. I was obviously lacking multiple tower and enemy types, but I was primarily concerned with adding tower upgrade functionality. I wanted there to be some element of strategy with respect to which towers the player chose to use. I wasn't entirely sure at that point what form that would take, but I knew introducing an upgrade mechanic would bring me closer to that goal. So I drew an upgraded form of the daisy, which was essentially taller and slightly bigger. I implemented an experience system that would award experience points on kill. Once the experience requirement was met, the daisy tower would transform into the upgraded version, which shot projectiles faster. Something about the towers was still missing though. The upgrade mechanic was nice, but there was nothing preventing me from just selecting a tower and holding left mouse button down permanently. I discussed this issue with my stream viewers and we started experimenting with an overheat mechanic. Do I add an overheat mechanic? 
What do you guys think about uh, an overheat mechanic? This overheat mechanic morphed eventually into an energy mechanic, which worked like this. Towers started at full energy and expended energy every shot. If a tower dipped below zero energy, the tower would be unable to be used until it fully regained its energy. I found that I was very happy with this system. It put some pressure on the player to switch towers to avoid the penalty that comes with fully expending a tower's energy. Big thanks to everyone on that stream for the energy suggestion and helping me think through this concept. Since there was only one enemy at that point, I added a classic tower defense enemy type, an enemy that is easy to kill but much faster than the other enemies. This new enemy took the form of a dog, which is somewhat regrettable. Yes, unfortunately in this game you're gonna kill the dog. Maybe I shouldn't do that, but I might get points off for that. Nah, I'm gonna go for it. I'll take the risk. At around 1.20 p.m. on Saturday, just over 24 hours into the jam, I had all of my mechanics. In this game, since the player has no control over tower placement due to the roll reversal theme, I also introduced a turret growing mechanic. With this mechanic in place, I, as a level designer, would pre-place positions in the levels where the towers would grow. This gave me some more control over the balancing of the levels. With the framework of the game finished, the next steps were to build out some more content and polish the game up. I created art for two new tower types, roses and corn. For the functionality of these towers, I made the rose root the first enemy that it hits. The upgraded version of the rose, which was a bush, rooted enemies in a radius around the enemy that was hit. The corn was given a mortar-style projectile which damages enemies in an area on impact. The upgraded corn was given a couple of taller corn stalks, a higher fire rate, and a faster energy recharge rate. The bulk of the work from that point onward was to make the game look pretty and feel good to play. To start on that effort, I added bullets and suitable particle effects for all the tower types. My favorite of these is the corn bullet, which is just an ear of corn. Of course, the enemies were rather static, so I animated them using basic squash and stretch. I moved on to blood explosion effects for the enemies when they die. I was able to make this quite satisfying in my opinion by giving the effect an initial big explosion but also having a long-lived particle effect that hung around for a few seconds to give the impression of pooling blood. It was 6.30 p.m. by that point, and I was starting to feel the time pressure. I had 19-ish hours to get sound effects, more particles, and more polish done. Oh, and I also hadn't started seriously designing the levels yet or doing any playtesting. The next five hours or so were spent on these efforts. I added a selection indicator to inform the player which tower they currently had selected. I also added a small experience bar over the towers so that the player could know when a tower was expected to be upgraded. After that, I finally got to work putting effort into designing levels and doing playtesting. I got the bulk of the level design done at this point. I even managed to squeeze in the creation of a new enemy type, the tractor, which is slow and has a lot of health. And I created some basic screens for level completion, level failure, and overall game completion. After all that work, it was 12.30 a.m. It was officially Sunday, July 9th, the submission deadline day. Submissions were due at 1 p.m., which gave me about 12 hours to submit the game. I set my alarm for 6 a.m. and went to bed for the night. I got to my computer around 6.30 a.m. on Sunday morning with coffee in hand and made it my morning mission to get sound effects for the game done. I had not done anything yet with sound or music, so I figured it was the most critical thing to do first. I pulled up my trusty sound effects collection and got to work selecting sounds for the game. I settled on some gore effects, some sounds appropriate for shooting, as well as a sound for when enemies enter the silo. This game was rather small, so it didn't take much more than a couple dozen sound effects to make the game feel complete. I added some more polish like a silo animation, corn explosion particles, and rose root effect art to indicate when enemies had been stopped by a rose tower. And I threw together a basic tutorial that's just text overlaid on the first level. To my surprise, all of this was done by about 9 a.m. I had four hours left to fix bugs, do playtesting, and find some music. I was able to get all of that done within the next couple hours. After playtesting some more, I settled on a game balance that I thought was generous really pretty good. The music I selected had a perfect country folk style for the game. It also took almost no time to find, so that gave me lots of extra time to focus on bonus efforts. I had time, for example, to add some final UI elements like a pause menu with basic options. With all of that finalizing work done, I created the itch.io page and submitted the game to the jam with the title Farmers Incoming. You can play Farmers Incoming now by clicking the link in the description below. Let me know what you think about the 
the game by leaving a comment on this video or on the itch.io page. Overall, I am really happy with how the game turned out. There are a few things I would have liked to change if I had the time, but I definitely think this is one of my best entries to a game jam yet. The mechanics work well together, the balance seems just about right, and the game is generally polished and feels good. On top of that, I think the game fits the theme pretty well. I want to give a shout out to my friend Ava, who helped me brainstorm and talk through ideas regularly through the jam period. He also submitted a game called Kraken Conundrum, so please give his game a try as well. The link for that is in the description too. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. You can wishlist Gunforged on Steam. And if you want to learn how to build a 2D survivor style game in Godot 4, you could check out my Udemy course. To stay up to date with my content, you can sign up for my newsletter at firebelly.com. Links for all of that are in the description below.